Hello friends, my name is Jake Montanez and this is my self-publishing blog where I'm documenting my journey to get my story, Night of the Illumination, published. Today I wanted to talk about my editing process and kind of the things that I'm looking at as I work my way through getting my story edited. Alright, so a while back I talked about how I've got myself set up with my editor letter off to the side, kind of giving me the big picture overall view of what uh, comments and concerns she had, uh, just in general. And then on a different monitor, I've actually got two different copies of my story up. Um, one being the original copy that my editor had provided back to me with all of the changes and cuts that she wanted to have me make. Um, I went through those already. I've cut out a lot of just like extraneous words and things like that. Uh, fixed a lot of uh, punctuation errors and basically did my first pass on that. Created that, saved that as a secondary copy and uh, have my own me edited version of it, uh, which needs to go back through and rearrange sentences or add things that the editor had requested. And I'm going to go through that with you now. Okay, here just briefly is uh, one of the pages of my editor letter, which is documenting the different uh, issues that she had. And here's stuff like, here's elements in the world that weren't quite fleshed out. She doesn't know how the society is set up, how the role of magic fits. Uh, those are just two basic you know, world building elements. There's lots of questions in her notes. And I do have a lot of internal dialogue in there where my characters are just thinking to themselves and she pointed out that a lot of those are kind of extraneous and could just be better worked into the story rather than being that internal monologue. So uh, those are all things I have to keep taking into account as I'm writing my story or going through the edit of my story and changing things. Now, let me give you a view of my side to side, and this is my side to side version of it here. Now you can see here on the left, this was the original version that my editor provided to me. It's got miscellaneous words within to say the least. No one knows what's going on, uh, changing home to house, uh, things like that. And I've already gone through, deleted a bunch of these things and changed it up uh, to better reflect having a better choice of words, I guess, is probably the best way to do it. I don't really know how else to say it. Um, and then we have over here on the right, the same comment here as it is over here. What about Trin? What is there? Why is there talk about her? What would Chet know about that this kid that knows about Trin? All right. That kind of matches up this pink spot here uh, versus this pink spot here. And these are your questions that I need to have answered, or I don't need to have them answered, I guess is probably a better way of saying it. It's these are questions that my editor had that she would like to have answered and have that worked into the story a little bit more. So it's this is the harder part of the editing for me, where this stuff is pretty simple. I can roll through and say, all right, she says, get rid of the word within. I'm getting rid of the word within. She says, get rid of, to say the least, and leave this as a sentence, and get rid of this comma. I can get rid of that. Snap my fingers, click the delete button, agree with it, move on with my life. Uh, these other ones are, okay, now I have to think about this. Is this something, um, why, what, what, what things do people hear or say about Trinea? Why are they talking about it in town? Um, why does Chet know that there's, uh, something that people know about Trin? And I'm asking myself as I go through this, um, have I already answered this somewhere else in the story? Because the editor, bless her heart, as she reads through this, these are a lot of stream of consciousness things that, uh, she's got going on and she has no idea what's going on here. And a lot of that is intentional on my part. To, to provide information at a trickles pace. But there are some instances where I recognize that, yeah, there should be a little bit more embellishing going on here or that world building that she hinted at in her uh, cover letter uh, needs to be worked in a little bit better because I know it in my head and the reader doesn't necessarily know that. So what I'm trying to do is uh, the really brain difficult part of trying to figure out what are the things that confused her as a reader and as the editor uh, that I can 
provide a little bit more clarity to in the rest of the story, either by updating the paragraphs that she highlights or the sentences that she highlights uh, to provide that little extra bit of clarity. Or if in my own judgment, that question is fully answered later on. And I do provide little answers either to myself or to her off to the side there saying, nope, I'm not going to do anything about that here because I know three chapters down or whatever that uh, that answer will become apparent. And at this point in the story, it is intentionally meant to be uh, misleading or necessarily obscuring information from the characters because it's not something that they need to know at that point. That's part of their journey is to find out this information. So I just wanted to give you guys a little side-by-side -side comparison of what the uh, very big initial cuts kind of looked like versus now that I've whittled it all down and, and gotten rid of all the extra stuff, uh, the things I'm working on now, the hard parts of where does this information need to be included in the story or do I already have this information in the story or should I move it up in the story? And, and those cause kind of like... I like to say butterfly effects. If I add them here or change them here, what kind of ripples does that have? I want the good ripples, not the bad ones where I reintroduce something earlier on and that changes character arcs or motivations or drives the characters to do something else. And I really don't want to be rewriting the entire story uh, because I skewed off onto a tangent rather than just saying, okay, here's a little bit of clarification I can provide, or this is the amount of clarification I'm allowing myself to have in the story at this point um, and making sure that it doesn't disrupt the overall flow of my story. So if this helps you kind of see with a side-by-side -side comparison what editing really looks like, or at least as far as I'm concerned, this is what editing looks like, um, please click like and uh, try to follow me in my journey so that you guys can understand uh, the trials and tribulations of an author going through the editing process and the overall process of publishing a story. And I thank you very much for watching this far and listening to my annoying rambling voice, and have a nice day. Thank you.